DaVinci Resolve is now the king of softwares when it comes to speed ramping after the 20.1 update because they've made some crazy changes to their interface that make your workflow seamless and flexible. Today, I'm gonna prove this by taking you through the new UI. I'm gonna show you how to speed ramp and also how to have independent controls over your easing in and out when it comes to speed ramping. I'm also going to show you how to do a boomerang speed ramp and to just do some speed ramping that's almost impossible in other softwares that look absolutely crazy. On top of that, I'm also gonna add some secret tips and tricks that I've developed with my time in speed ramping, as well as how to add rotation to your speed ramping to make them look even better. And thank you to Audio for sponsoring today's video. More on that later, let's get into it. Let's first dive into this new interface for speed ramping because this is where there is a major improvement. Now, just like in the DaVinci Resolve 20 update, we have this keyframe panel. So if we open this up, it's gonna show here right at the bottom. Right now it's a little bit small, so let's move our video tracks up and these parameters up as well. Uh, so we can properly see our clip as well as the parameters. Right now, this looks a little bit overwhelming because we have literally every parameter showing up. Let's quick change that by hitting these three dots here to open this menu and now display parameters with keyframes. This way, the only parameters that show up are what we keyframe. Now, if we go onto our clip and hit Control R, we can add a speed point. And as you can see, that's going to add the parameter to our interface here. But these are still the keyframes. We want to be looking at the curves. So to do that, you're gonna go over over to the left and hit keyframe curves. And now you have access to the retime curves. And you might notice that this looks very similar towards the old retime curves, but this is a whole lot better. So let's do a little speed ramp here. So I already have one speed point added. And now to increase the speed at the start of this clip here, you could either drag up right here but you're going to have to drag it a ton to get up to the speed you want. Uh, and I just find that you don't have that much control. I actually prefer using the handles on the clip itself. So if we zoom in slightly, now I can drag this over and I generally like to increase my speed to around 1500. So let's go for this clip. Let's just go up to a thousand because it's not a super long clip, just like so. Let's maybe increase the length of time that it's speeding up. So a quick note, the top handle here changes the speed, as you can see, and the bottom handle changes the location of the marker. So I want it to end right with the table in the center of the screen right there. So we're at a thousand percent speed, but let's speed it up to 1500. Perfect. Now let's go forward in our clip to maybe right there, add another speed point, and let's slow this portion of our clip down to 50% so that it's just moving a little bit slower. Let's move this in a little bit closer. And just so you guys know, all of my speed ramping clips are always shot at 60 frames per second. This means that then I can slow it down by 50% and still get smooth playback. One extra little tip that's going to take your videos to the next level is if you're doing speed ramping with cars or real estate or any type of speed ramping, make sure your timeline settings are set at 30 frames per second. This is just gonna make your video look a whole lot smoother than the 24 frames per second. Obviously, if you're going for cinematic or storytelling where it's like a talking head video, 24 is fine. But for speed ramping, you want that smooth motion. 30 frames is the best option for you. Now let's go back into this project here and increase the end of our clip. So I'm gonna drag the top there all the way to the left. And now you can see that we're sitting at 1260% speed and 1600% speed, so that's fine. So at first glance, I was a little bit disappointed because I thought we couldn't smooth out our keyframes in this panel here, but you can. How you do that is you just select your keyframes. We can just drag a box over it like so, right click the keyframe and hit smooth. And now we have the smoothing handle. So let's smooth out the end and let's smooth out the start. And this is where my biggest frustration within speed ramping lied within DaVinci Resolve is the fact that we have these tied controls for easing in and out. And all that we can do is like the sine curve, which isn't super pleasing for speed ramping. But I've had a couple comments on my older videos and I've actually learned a new technique. But I think the majority of DaVinci Resolve users don't know this technique. And you need to know it because it changes the game for speed ramping. So let's drag this handle back so that this right handle here just lines up with the end of our clip right there. And now on this other handle, let's hold shift and now drag. And you can see that we have independent control and it looks like we're creating more of a cubic curve. So our speed ramp is popping up into speed rather than just a regular ease. And we could do that with a start as well. Let's just make this a little bit shorter, just like so and hold shift and drag it over just like so. Uh, this handle's extending a little bit much, so I'm gonna hold shift again so that I can independently control the inside of the ease. Now you could go very extreme on this and get a very steep curve. I find that that doesn't look very good, so I do like to leave a bit of a curve on the ease in, so something like so. So now we have the smooth sort of cubic curve going on. Let's move that back, play it back, 
and we've got a nice and smooth speed ramp. Now, two more quick things that will make or break your speed ramp is good music and good sound effects. And today's sponsor has you covered. Audio offers real music from real artists that sounds incredible, and they have a vast array of sound effects to use for any of your projects. They also have industry leading AI tools that make finding music easier than ever. Either you can use Link Match and grab a link from Spotify to find your perfect track, or you can go to Hans AI and just type out the idea of your video and it'll spit out a perfect song for you. Additionally, on top of all of that, you can use their music for your own personal projects, your YouTube, or even your clients work, even if it's going on TV, because their licensing covers everything. Now, Audio offers a lifetime plan of unlimited music and unlimited downloads. This means that you get access to each of their songs that are added every single week for just a one time payment of $199. In comparison, some of the competitors charge $199 for just one year. But if you'd like access to some of the cutting edge AI features that I mentioned earlier, then the pro plan might be more suitable for you. And it's only $59 per year if you use code VANBEEK at checkout. And then you get access to all the tools, all the licensing, and all the sound effects that you will ever need. So go check it out for yourself. Link down below in the description. Now, I wanna quick show you a tip that's been working out really well for me for speed ramping, and that's when I select both keyframes and hit ease. Again, right-clicking the keyframe, hitting ease in and out. Pretty much what I do is I drag the handle forward with both handles, and then once that handle hits the right side, I just hold shift and then keep dragging uh, with the left handle. And what that looks like in real time is again, I'm just grabbing it and then holding shift. So it's a really smooth process. I just hit shift partway through pulling that easing handle, and that way I can get this smooth curve every single time. Now, you also might notice that this interface here looks very similar to my recommendation in my last DaVinci Resolve 20 video where I talked about speed ramping, and I gave an option for what speed ramping could look like inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now, in that video, I created an interface that looked exactly like this pretty much, but it would have independent keyframes for each different types of speeds, but because this already has independent control now with these easing handles, I don't know if that is necessary. But there's still one more recommendation that I would give to Blackmagic Design to just make this system a little bit better is I don't like the fact that we have to press on keyframes, right click, and then hit easing. This just adds an extra step that isn't necessary. Rather, these easing buttons could easily live either right above or even better, they could live right in this left column right here and it would not take up too much space at all. That just saves the time and accuracy of having to right click a keyframe to open these easing controls. All right, now let me show you exactly how to create a boomerang speed ramp. It's super, super easy. Now on our clip, let's scrub through and find the place where we want it to slow down. So maybe right about there, control R and add a speed point. Let's increase the speed of the start of our clip again up to around 1500%. That's what I like to do. And then let's slow down the speed to 50% of the remainder of the clip. Now again, generally you'd be editing this to music, but let's go around here. Let's add another speed point. And now we're going to change the speed to reverse in the inspector. If it's not open, just open it up right there. So let's go into our inspector, hit speed change and hit reverse. Now our entire clip is reversed after that point and is going to be going back towards the house. So let's increase the length of our clip to right about there, maybe zoom out. And now we can increase the speed of that section around to the same percentage to the start of the clip. So 1500, but in reverse, right around there. And now you can see our speed map looks like these steps going down. What we're gonna do now, again, is just grabbing both, right click and hit ease in and out. And now again, easing. And then once that right handle hits that end of the clip, I'm holding shift and dragging it out a little bit more. Let's not go too far because if we go too far, now I can't extend the easing of the start. So let's go right about to the center, right about there. Let's grab this first one ease in and out, and now hold shift right to the center of the clip. And now if we zoom out, we have a beautiful boomerang speed ramp of our clip. And the nice thing about this comparative to the fusion method of speed ramping is we actually still have control over the speed of our clip. So again, like I said before, if you're working with 60 frames per second, you slow it down to 50%. Now your video is playing back at 30 frames per second, resulting in smooth motion. 
But if you're speed ramping within Fusion, now you're using frame-based speed ramping. You're just making a curve based off of the frames and not the actual speed. So the center speed of your speed ramp within the Fusion page might actually be zero frames per second or two frames per second, and it might be going really slow. So then you're relying on frame blend and optical flow to fill in those frames to make smooth motion. Whereas this, you're always going to have smooth motion because we're not going lower than 50%. But in a boomerang speed ramp like this, there is a couple frames that are going to be slower than obviously 50% because it's going from forward to reverse. So it has to transition from the two. But for the most part, any type of speed ramp is never going to be going below 50% resulting in smooth motion. And you might say, Joel, these speed ramps are awesome, but this doesn't really set DaVinci ahead of its other competitors when it comes to speed ramping. But that's where I'd stop you in your tracks and show you this method of speed ramping, which is really hard to do in any other type of software. So what I'm talking about is having multiple speed ramps in different directions in the same clip. So let's go ahead and make that. So let's speed ramp into the start of this clip. We can see we're focusing on this house right here. Uh, so let's move forward in our clip around so. Let's add a speed point. And I'm not gonna be worrying about easing at the start here. Let's just add our speed points. All right, let's move forward add another speed point, let's slow it down to 50%. Now let's go forward, add another speed point and increase this. So again, now we sort of have this fast start, fast again, okay, perfect. Now let's slow this portion of the clip down. Let's make sure that we're still at 50% by dragging it back. And now we can maybe speed ramp forwards again. So again, now we have three peaks to work with. We have a very dynamic speed ramp. And now again, this is where most people would finish, but we can still speed ramp in reverse. So let's take a look at this. Let's go to our keyframe, hit reverse, and now our entire clip is in reverse. Let's go forward to this portion, like so, add a speed point and increase the speed. Let's add another speed point, slow it down, drag this handle back again to roughly 50%. Scrub forwards, add another speed point, something like so. And then let's change this speed to 50. And now you can see we have a very interesting dynamic speed ramp, which is moving forwards and backwards. Let's add some easing to all this. So right click and hit ease. Again, holding shift to start, easing in, ease, ease this in as much as we can, ease this in as much as we can, and like so. And then let's ease out the end. All right, obviously we have a really interesting looking speed ramp curve right here. But if we play it back, you're gonna see that it's completely smooth and it looks great. And it just jumps and pushes to each different location with the right curves. All right, so I just opened one of my real estate projects right here, and I want to show you how to add rotation to your speed ramps within DaVinci Resolve, because this is something I struggled with and struggled to make it look smooth and natural, but I think I've cracked the code pretty well. So as you can see here, I'm just gonna undo my adjustment clip right here. I'm gonna hit Control R, open my curves right here, push that up a little bit so we can properly see it. And this is similar to the speed ramp we just built with the exact same clip. So I'm not gonna be able to play the music because it is copyright, but if we play it back, we've got a speed ramp forward, 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 reverse, reverse, right? To end the clip and then it transitions into a new clip. So the next step is to find your song right here. I'm just gonna delete this transition for now so it's easier to see. And as you can see, I've placed markers on each of the beats of the song, just like so, so that I can see it inside of the Fusion page. And now if you were to go into your effects and add an adjustment clip to your timeline, like I have done here, and then open it inside of Fusion, we can add some pretty cool rotation to our speed ramps that's just gonna take your video up to the next level. And the way that you want to add this rotation is not to add the keyframes of the rotation on the marker, but in between the markers. So let's hit shift space and add a transform node by typing XF. And now before this here, so let's go in between the two, let's add a keyframe on angle, and then let's go before sort of the same spacing. Let's add another keyframe on angle. And on the second one, now again, a speed ramp is happening in between these two keyframes. Let's increase the angle ever so slightly, maybe to three. That's good. Now let's go to the next one, increase it even more. So let's increase it to six. And then let's go in between the next keyframes to here. Let's increase it all the way up to 10 or 9.9. .9. Now it's going in reverse. So let's also reduce the angle uh, so to match the motion, just like so, so down to 5.9. Let's go forward again. Let's go down to 2.5. Let's go again. We're still speed ramping. We're inside the house now. Something like so, 1.4. And then we can go to there and add one more 
keyframe, just like so. So as you can see here, you can see our graph of our angles. So let's add some easing to this. So let's grab a box and let's select all of them and hit F. Now, what this is going to do instead of S, if we do S, it's just going to make a smooth ramp, which is not what we want. We want the angle rotation to stop between each speed ramp. We don't want it to keep smoothing in and out. It's not going to look good. So let's hit F, then let's hit T, and that's going to give you these ease in and out options. And let's increase each of them by a lot to around 80. And now, like I said, these speed ramps happen on the markers. So if we drag our playhead forward right here, let's say there's a speed ramp right here on this marker, which there is, we can see as it speed ramps, the angle also does a little flick during the speed ramp, which looks great. But obviously we have transparency going on right now within our clip. So we need to fix that. Let's go into our transform and change our edges from canvas to mirror. Uh, and that's gonna look a little bit better. But because of the extreme angles that we're going with, we're gonna get some weird looking houses. Let's say if we zoom in right here, that does not look natural. So let's just increase the size ever so slightly. We can have a little bit of that mirroring going on so that we still preserve the resolution of our clip. But now if we take a look, we're not gonna get some crazy artifacts in the edges. And now if we take a look at our clip, we can see that the rotation is perfectly timed in sync with our speed ramps and it looks phenomenal. And there you have it. That is why I think DaVinci Resolve is one of the best softwares in the game to use for speed ramping. You have so much control, so much flexibility, and it's only getting faster and faster. But I still have more tips and tricks to show you, but I don't have time to fit them all into today's video. And I'm still developing some more tools to use alongside speed ramping. So if you wanna see those, make sure that you stick around and subscribe to the channel. And thank you again to Audio for sponsoring today's video. Till next time.